in this tutorial we're going to make a 4S lithium ion battery pack. Be aware that this is the third video of the series and some things are covered in the previous ones, so check them out if you have any questions. Hello friends, this will be as fast as I can make it, so you can get up and running. All items used are in the description. This is the schematic of the battery that we are aiming to build. Now grab 4 batteries and place them side by side in reverse sequence each time. Glue the intermediate sections on both sides. Repeat the process once more and you should now have two separate 4S packs. Now apply glue to the top side as shown, align and stick them together. Following all the previous steps correctly will result in this battery arrangement. Next, as shown before, cut the nickel ribbon metal strips to 3 cm size. Put them inside the container unless you want to leave on the edge and have this possible result. And after you are done, place the metal strips in this arrangement before welding so you can have a better understanding of the final form of the battery. Now it's time to proceed with welding the strips to the pack. Turn on the spot welding machine. Follow the video along and start with the parallel connections. You apply upward pressure and the welder tips activate. Make at least 6 welds in each battery cell to be certain that it is secure. Every once in a while, put your finger on the welding tips base to check that it is not overheating. Once the parallel connections are completed, continue the procedure as before with the series connections. Now the top side of the battery is completed, roll it over and continue with the bottom side. Now watch closely as I proceed with making the series connections.
Once you have completed all the necessary connections, check that what you see on your screen is what you're holding on your hands. Now it's time to cut the wires that we're going to put on the battery's terminals. Cut two pieces to about 10 cm size and strip them. Using your soldering iron, thin the wires. Make a solder blob on the negative terminal of the battery and use it to solder the wire. Check that it is secure in place and proceed with the positive terminal. Again make a solder blob and solder the positive terminal onto the battery. Now that both cables are soldered into position, it's time to adjust the length. Cut both cables, if required, to the same length. Keep in mind that both wires are now active and connected to the battery, so be extra careful when handling them. Slide the heat ring in place. Tin the positive wire. and cut the two additional heat strings for the XT60 connector. Now print in the XT60 connector and solder the positive wire in place. Slide the heat ring and move on with a negative wire. Do the same as before. When all heat sinks are in position, heat them up to secure them in place. The last step will be to put one more heat shrink over the XT60 connector and filling it up with hot glue. This will increase the rigidity of the connector. Now moving on to the last but maybe most important step, the balance port connector. As you can see, I am rearranging the pins. I want you to do the same because the colors I'm referring may not be the same in your connector. Starting from the right to the left, we have the red cable the orange cable, the white cable, the yellow cable, and last the black cable. Check it out and copy it before proceeding. Moving on, we will now solder the cables in position. Starting with the orange cable that sits the furthest away of them all. Pass it through the battery and solder it in position.
the next cable in line will be the yellow one, as this also sits furthest away from the rest. Again pass it through the battery and solder as before. Now that the yellow wire is also soldered in position, we move to the red wire. We cut it to the correct length, so that it is the same as all the others, and solder it on the positive terminal of the battery. Next in line we have the white one, so again cut it to the correct length and solder it in place. Each cable here has a double use. The red cable is to measure the master positive or total plus voltage, but it is also the positive terminal of the first cell. The orange cable is representing the negative terminal of the first cell but also the positive of the second cell. The white cable is the negative of the second cell and the positive of the third cell. The yellow is the negative of the third cell and the positive of the fourth and final cell. The black one is the negative of the fourth cell and the master negative or total minus of the battery. Now, as you can see, I am soldering the black cable on the negative terminal of the battery. And with that done, we have completed the balance port connector. Now it's time to put some hot glue for insulation. You will also notice that I'm putting some more hot glue over the soldering points. That is again for insulation, but also for stability when you leave the battery on the table. Do not forget to put some hot glue on the underside as well. And with that, we have completed the battery. Before charging, let's check that all the connections of the battery are correct. We have 14 volts total. 3.5 per cell. Check all four cells and you can understand that this is pretty normal for a 4S battery. After checking the battery, connect it to your charger. Select the lithium ion program and for the first time perform a low amp storage charge. Take note of the maximum charging and discharging capabilities of your battery displaying now on your screen and follow them to avoid damaging it. So that concludes the third video of the series. If you found this tutorial useful and enjoy the content, please consider subscribing and giving a thumbs up. In the next video, we will perform a real life endurance test to see how these batteries stack up. Until then, stay safe and creative.